Howdy folks, in today's episode of Pool School, I'm gonna to talk to you about the different kinds of pool brushes there are out there and help you make a choice on which one will work best for your pool service needs. So what do you say we dive right in? Okay, first things first. This is my old pool brush, and if you can tell, it's kind of wore out. If you look at the edges there, see the edge, it's all worn out there and it's pretty angled and it's worn down you can see the angles all the bristles worn down from the brushing uh, but this has been a great brush and the only reason i chose to replace is because of the edge if you look right there see how all those bristles are missing it's time to get a new brush and this brush has served me well i've had this for i would say over two years and uh, the only reason i decided i'm going to change it out really is because this little tab right here there's little wings that clip into your pool one of them broke off and you can always replace these and I'll show you that later in this video but I thought it was time to replace this brush and so I'm gonna go through the three brushes what they are for and then I'll help you choose one that works best for you and we'll also talk about a little bit about how to maintain your brush so it lasts you a long time okay so there are three basic kind of pool brushes and then they they come in various lengths There's usually two lengths this the standard one that I always use it's a 14 inch you don't need anything longer than that uh, they're harder to push through when you get the longer ones and unless you have a major commercial size pool you don't need one so 14 inches fine but there's three different kinds and I'm gonna go to them in order of abrasiveness all right all right, so the first one is your typical nylon bristle brush. Now, oh, one thing I'll point out is these have, see the little wings there, how it's tilted right, right on the end, it's bent, okay? So those are nylon bristles, and this is the least abrasive of all of them. The only time I tell people that they should use a brush like this is if they have like a above ground pool with a vinyl liner or a fiberglass pool, uh, or they have repainted the surface of their pool instead of resurfacing it with like plaster or here's the last one if you have old plaster and my suggestion if you have old plaster is get that pool resurfaced because all that powder and the plaster powder is getting off in your pool and it's not very good to swim in so anyway this is a nylon bristle brush it has 100% nylon bristles no metal in it at all and I always get brushes that have a metal back on them because that's a that uh, keeps them stable helps them wear better okay so this is the first one again nylon bristle it's the least abrasive the second brush and I will say this is my go-to brush and the one that I use every time uh, for all my pools except what I said earlier pools that have vinyl linings or fiberglass and right now I don't have any like that so the only reason I have that nylon bristle brush is because I had an above ground pool and I don't have it anymore so I still have the brush and it's still in good condition so the second one and my go-to brush is a combo brush okay this one is made by and you'll see it a and B see that that's one brand that I use and I've really had good results with it it has a combination of nylon bristles and metal bristles and they're skinny you can see how skinny they are right and again it's a metal back and it has a little clips and this is the one that I use all the time it is mildly abrasive and it's good for any pool pebble tech plaster um, bead creep similar pools like that again this is too abrasive though to use on a vinyl pool or an above ground pool or some pool with like a fiberglass lining or um, some kind of repainted surface because this is a little bit more abrasive but for your general pool uses this is the one I use and the brand that I use most of the time is A and B and there's another brand and I'll go over that a little later okay so that is the second brush and that's my go-to brush the third brush I don't even have one because I don't recommend them at all it is the 100% metal bristle brush and it's basically the same sty style of brush with little curved ends and that's my own preference some of them you can get them straight all the way across but is a metal bristle brush and the manufacturers kind of say it's a good brush for algae but I'm not a fan of using it because it is just way too abrasive in my opinion to use on a regular basis does so I have something like that just for algae doesn't make a lot of sense to me that again is my personal opinion my own personal preference but I do not recommend the third and the most abrasive brush which is a metal bristle brush just because it's too hard on the surface to use on a regular basis and the combo brush is sufficient if you take care of algae the way that I talk about in my algae and algicides video 
So those are the three brushes that they have. And again, my go-to brush is the combo brush. Now, let's talk about brands. Okay, brands. There are two brands that I usually use. There's a ton of them out there. And really, as long as you get one that has the metal back, uh, you can go online and do a Google search and try to find something that is in a good price range for you. Um, mine are not that expensive when I get them. But the two brands that I've used regularly, mainly because my pool supplier carries those, is the A and B brand, okay, and that's the one I showed you earlier, okay. I'll show you a little label. There it is right there. See, it says A and B, right? And uh, is there a website on there? Nope. It's just A and B Brush Manufacturer Corp. And you can look that up online. You can probably find those. That's one that I use. The other kind that I use is made by a company called Pool Style. So the first brush that I showed you that was all wore out, that was a pool style brush. And that works pretty good too. And so you can do an online search. But again, if you're doing an online search and you find another brand, uh, the thing that I would say stay away from is the fancy ones that have all kinds of like little fins that help keep it pressed against the, the, the side of the pool and all that kind of stuff. You really don't need it. The more you put on those things, the more resistance it creates in the water and it's harder to actually use and push through the water and, and, and pull back through the water as well. So a standard brush like those, any one of those three, again, remember the third one, I don't recommend the full metal one, okay? But pool style or A and B are both very good brushes. Now people ask me, how did I get my brushes to last that long, like two years, especially because I do pools usually two to three days a week? Well, part of it is I take care of my brushes. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about caring for your brush. So regardless of the style of brush you have, what you want to do is make sure, make sure, make sure that you always store it in a dry um, place that is not exposed to direct sunlight. So you wanna kinda of keep your brush out of the elements. I know a lot of people that leave these things in the back of their truck or they leave them out in the sun and they just get cooked and the nylon bristles especially, they just break right off. And then when you're brushing your pool, you got all these nylon bristles floating around the pool. So to take care of your brush, the biggest thing is just make sure you store it in a place that's away from the elements. So I have a little storage shed and I just put them in there. Also, when I get done using my brush every time, I just shake it like this, okay? I grab it and just kinda of shake it and that gets the excess water off allows it to dry out pretty good and then I just store it so it's pretty easy to do that's a really easy way to take care of your pool brush and make sure that it's gonna stay in good shape for you for a long time and if you only service your pool once a week chances are if you take care of the brush and don't stick it in direct sunlight you're probably gonna have a brush that's gonna last you quite a bit of time all right one more item I'd like to talk to you about and it has to do with the little tabs that hold see those little tabs see that little black thing right there with the two nubbies that go out there, that holds it onto your pole. And again, I showed you my first brush and how it was all worn out and how that little tab broke off. So if your brush is in decent shape and those, let's say you, for some reason, you banged your brush or you did something and you busted that clip off, you can get replacement clips. This is a, a, a packet of them and this fits really easily into the brush. It's super easy to do. All you gotta do is pinch it together right here. Right there, you pinch that together and these will come out and you can pull it right out and then you just put a new one in. And these are really cheap. You can get these online. This one happens to be made by Pool Style, same manufacturer that I get some of my brushes from sometimes. But if you break one of these clips, don't think that you need to go get a new brush. All right, you can actually just replace the clips and save yourself more money. Remember what we said? We're talking about servicing your pool yourself and saving yourself a ton of money. So this will help you save money and not have to buy something you don't need. The cool thing is these clips usually also work in nets and we'll talk about nets in a future episode. And again, this clip is a little bit trickier because of the way it fits, but you can still get this clip out and pull it out. Okay, it's a little trickier to do, but I've done it before. And again, a lot of times I'll break these clips before I ever break a net or wear out my brush. And that's why I will use these replacement clips much more often. So always have a supply of these. So just a quick recap, folks. Remember the three types of brushes. There's the nylon bristle, which is the least abrasive. It's best for your pool if you have a pool with a vinyl liner like above ground pool or a semi above ground pool or you have a fiberglass pool or you have a pool that has been um, 
painted, the inside painted, as opposed to resurface with like new plaster or pebble tech. But that's the least abrasive, so those are the kind of pools that you might want to use one of those on. You never want to use anything with metal on those types of pools that I just described. Okay, second one is my go-to, and it's best for most pools, plaster, pebble tech, bead creep, things like that, quartz tech. Any of those is the combo brush, which is a combination of nylon and metal. And then finally, and one that I do not recommend, is the all-metal bristle brush, which they say is good for algae, but it's just far too abrasive and I wouldn't use that on any pool no matter what. So, I hope that helps. So there we go. That's my lesson on brushes. I hope it made sense and I hope it helped. I'm also going to list uh, the names and if I can find any links, I'll put a couple links down to the A and B brushes and the pool style brushes so that you can click on those links and see. Or you can do a Google search and just look up 14 inch brushes, right? Just look up 14 inch pool brushes or combo brush and you can probably find a bunch of different deals there. Remember, make sure you get a metal backed one because it's going to be more durable. And don't forget, these replacement clips have a supply of those in case you break a clip and then you have to buy a new brush, okay? So again, if you have any questions, remember to post them in the comments section below or you can email directly, I'm sorry, you can email me directly and it's gonna show up right here, kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Once again, kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Please again, like and subscribe to this channel and share it. And as always, have fun, be safe, and always watch those kids around water and I will see you next time.